and the the first project lead I'm going to pass it over to is for Savannah, Sergey. Um, and I have his slides here. Please let me know if for some reason you can't see them or having difficulties. But otherwise, everyone, please uh, mute your lines and, and send questions in through the, the chat function on Meeting Birder. So, Sergey, are you there and ready? Yeah, thank you. Uh, awesome. As, as for the slides, it, it looks okay. Uh, Okay, first of all, thanks for the OpenStack Foundation for making us able to share our project status update. Um, so let's start. Could you please open the next slide? Um, okay, my name is Sergei Okanov. I am the product technical lead for the data processing program in OpenStack. Um, it consists uh, mainly of Savannah projects and uh, some sub projects related to it, like uh, disk image builder elements. Um, so, uh, OpenStack uh, dashboard plugin and something else. Um, let's start from the Havana release overview. Um, we had uh, about 70 uh, um, blueprints implemented in Havana, about 150 bucks fixed. Uh, I'm very excited to see that we have uh, about 900 code commits from 31 people. and uh, more than 3,000 uh, code reviews. And uh, our the most important achievement for the Havana release is that we was officially incubated for the Ice House release cycle. Um, you can find uh, more details uh, on our Launchpad uh, page about the Havana release. Um, I'd like to add some notes. Uh, for the Havana release, we have uh, no uh, um, adjusted release cycle to the OpenStack, and uh, we had two uh, separate releases for this time range, order two and order three. Uh, you can find release notes on the wiki page. Um, so let's move on to the next uh, slide about the Havana highlights. Um, so uh, I'd like to mention that we grown from the proof of concept uh, to the uh, really uh, good community-backed project uh, in Havana release. Uh, it was really, very excited to see how we achieve new contributors and features uh, for the last uh, nine months. Um, as for the contributors uh, in core, we have uh, folks from Mirantis, Cottonworks, and Red Hat. Uh, and uh, in addition, we had uh, uh, a lot of uh, contribution from HP, IBM, United States, and Workspace. And uh, it looks very, uh, very pleasure for us. Um, in the, the Havana, we had uh, two plugins, the vanilla, vanilla plugin that uh, installs uh, vanilla Apache Hadoop with uh, uh, related data processing tools. And uh, we had uh, Hortonworks data platform plugin that installs Apache Ambari uh, management platform that could install uh, Hadoop and uh, a lot of uh, related tools. Uh, so the plugin installs management system that uh, help to install a lot of stuff on uh, cluster nodes. Um, so as I mentioned, we have clustering, uh, clustering API and uh, supporting Havana release. Uh, uh, we have Elastic Data Processing and uh, of course, we have integration with OpenStack dashboards, which currently uh, lives in separate repository uh, and uh, could be enabled as a plugin for the OpenStack dashboard. Um, okay, let's take a look on the clustering feature uh, in uh, Savannah. Um, first of all, it provides an ability for users to provision a cluster of different sizes and topologies with a lot of uh, configurations that could be passed to the Hadoop and related tools. So we have a configuration management system uh, that works uh, on templates mechanism, including templates for both uh, clusters and node groups. It makes uh, users able to define different configurations and uh, store them in Savannah and uh, provision uh, different clusters in one-click manner. Um, we support cluster scaling for both adding and removing nodes to the cluster. 
uh, for the data loss we support and the conditioning that makes uh, users able to uh, remove data nodes from the Hadoop cluster too. Uh, as a very interesting feature, we support uh, data, data node saint affinity. It, um, it works uh, like, uh, like a scheduler hints in Nova. Uh, in fact, we pass some scheduler hints to Nova when creating instances. It uh, deploys cluster in many to have uh, only one uh, data node per compute host, per physical compute host, I mean. Uh, it uh, makes Hadoop cluster reliable and, uh, uh, and uh, consistent, uh, and it makes data consistent. Um, so we have some performance testing that uh, it, it uh, uh, shows that Solana could uh, deploy about 200 of nodes in just five minutes. So it's good performance for Hadoop cluster provision, especially in compare with manual Hadoop cluster provision okay, by, uh, by guys. Um, so the next uh, big uh, feature in Havana release, and uh, I think it's, it's the main feature of Savannah, uh, that's an elastic data processing. Uh, in fact, it's an API to execute MapReduce jobs without exposing any details of underlying infrastructure. Uh, it means that um, you can, uh, can know uh, exactly anything about the, uh, about the operation system installed on uh, nodes, about how it works, uh, about uh, how OpenStack was configured. Um, maybe Newton could be used or no network. Uh, Cinder could be used for volumes uh, and etc. Uh, and uh, after that, we can uh, uh, provision using cluster in some cluster. Uh, that's an optional uh, for EDP too, because we can just push our jobs and uh, EDP will set up the cluster only for running this job and then terminate it after we get getting results. Um, it works uh, like Amazon's uh, EMR service uh, that provides the same ability, but it's not open source and it works only on Amazon and provides um, <clears throat> a very short list of uh, different versions and uh, uh, types of Hadoop tools. So let's take a look on some internals of EDP. We provide them. Uh, and concept of data sources. Currently, we support uh, Swift and uh, external HDFS. Uh, for the heavy as you can see, we are support only Swift as a data source. It could be used um, for both input and output uh, data. Um, as for the different job types, we're working with uh, pure Java jobs, uh, pig and hive jobs. Uh, both pig and hive are uh, SQL-like scripting languages for writing MapReduce jobs uh, in a much more short manner than just on Java or some other languages. Um, and of course, we have user-friendly UI for ad hoc analytics uh, based on Hive or Peak. Uh, so you can just go to the UI and uh, upload your Hive script and it will work on the data that already exists on Swift, for example. Okay, uh, that's one. Uh, group is up on the next slide. Thank you. Um, let's take a look on some stats for Icehouse. Uh, currently, we're working on Icehouse 2 development milestone. Uh, it will be released next week, I hope. And uh, so far, we have uh, about 24 blueprints implemented, uh, 43 bugs fixed, and uh, about uh, 200 of code commits from 26 people. In the, of course, we have some code reviews, it's about uh, 1,500. Uh, next slide, please. Hmm. <clears throat> um, for other uh, Ice House highlights, uh, I'd like to mention that we have uh, 
bunch of new contributors, saving the old one too. Um, it's uh, uh, there, there are uh, uh, some of them. Innovent, Samsung, Intel, IPAM systems, uh, Zurich University. I'd like to thank all our contributors for making efforts for uh, for making Solana better and uh, making new features and uh, new plugins. As for the plugins, we have uh, Intel distribution of Hadoop plugin in Ice House. It was uh, uh, the, f the first basic version was already committed to the Savannah, and uh, we're working now on making it better and support EDP feature and uh, other stuff. Uh, so currently we have two sorts of uh, huge Hadoop vendors with Savannah plugins. So it's a good achievement too. And uh, we're looking for the last one, uh, for the Cloudera distribution uh, too. Uh, and the guys uh, have a blueprint and uh, have some initial discussions about making a plugin for Savannah that will use and install Cloudera. Um, so in Icehouse, we already have uh, implemented heat integration for orchestration uh, engine in Savannah. Um, and uh, we have uh, compute integration with the stack and running some gating jobs in Savannah country in a synchronous manner. Uh, but we hope to make uh, the synchronous gating late in the nice house or early in day release. Um, we currently have uh, about uh, basic integration with Tempest and uh, basic API test and review. Uh, and I hope that it will be worth soon. Uh, and we have C uh, CLI proof of concept. Uh, it was included to the latest Solana client release, audit 4.1, several days ago. Um, as for the ice house plans, uh, the main plan is uh, is to make heat uh, the default orchestration engine for Savannah. Um, we currently uh, uh, have mostly all features with the lack of maybe one or two of them in the heat uh, engine. So uh, I think that it's possible to make heat the default orchestration early in Ice House, probably in Ice House 3 development by milestone. Um, and uh, of course, the very important part of Icehouse release uh, should be Tempest integration. Um, we're planning to move our uh, currently implemented and used integration tests out of the Savannah uh, and uh, our integration test framework to the Tempest scenarios tests. And uh, we'd like to add some CLI tests too. Um, as for the API, we're looking uh, for the implementing and releasing V2 API that would be based on Pecan and Wizme. Um, it uh, should be uh, some kind of uh, polished and uh, more consistent API with uh, probably some new features, but mostly it should be uh, just uh, an update, uh, consistent and user-friendly of our current API. Um, and uh, of course, we'd like to complete our CLI implementation um, and uh, the last but not uh, the least point um, is the guest agents proof of concept. Uh, we are now working hard on implementing some kind of proof of concept for agents. And um, we are proposing an idea of having unified guest agents in OpenStack for different services uh, to be able to not uh, duplicate uh, efforts uh, on making agents differ between different projects. It was uh, already discussed, uh, initially discussed in the mailing list, and uh, we'd like to return back with some proof concepts later. So I think that that's all for the product status and plans update. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Great, we'll switch it back to uh the chat to see if anything's come up in chat. Okay. I don't see any immediate questions. So uh, we will move on to 
Michael and then see if we have any questions at the end, if that sounds good. Yep. You All right. Ready, can, can everyone hear me? Yeah, can everyone hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Okay, then it sounds like we're good to go. All right. Uh, howdy, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Bassnight. I am the PTL for uh, Trove, uh, previously named Dread Dwarf. Um, we've been around for a few years now at Rackspace, and uh, and we've been working on this product for a while. And <laughs> Hmm. All right. Now we're having some. Cool talk. Now we have a key. Now we have a key. Okay, so I guess uh, so, uh, we've, we, we are now officially incubated, uh, or sorry, officially integrated, um, which is really awesome. Uh, we were incubated in Havana um, watching uh, Sergey's. Um, Project update. Uh, I, I recognize a lot of the things that they're working on um, as things we're working on right now, and things that we had to do during our uh, incubation cycle as well. So um, I wish him the best of luck in in getting that stuff done. It's a fun six months going from uh, seeing very little traction on your project to having ten random companies and people hopping in your uh, channels every day um, uh, asking how they can help. So. Um, so right now we are officially integrated, um, and uh, what I'll first do is talk about some of the things that we did in Havana. I'm going to focus a little less on some of the plumbing and uh, get to the few features we actually got to uh, implement while we were doing all the plumbing work to get integrated. So um, our friends at Marantis did the first feature, and that was really awesome, um, it, RPM integration. So previously we, uh, our guest images only worked on Debian-based uh, OSs. So um, that made it really hard for people who wanted to test, um, test say, our guest uh, spinning up and running MySQL in um, uh, CentOS or uh, you know Red Hat Fedora, any of those. Um, so the guys at Marantis um, focused on that uh, early on. As soon as that was one of the first features they worked on, um, it knocked it out of the park. And now we've got um, a, an equal footing on both uh, RPM and um, apt uh, based. Um, uh, distros for installation, um, and of course for running it. There's there's small things between small differences between all the different OSs that we have to kind of keep um, handles on as well. Um, so JSON schema validation was another one. Um, we were hand rolling a decent amount of validation, and uh, this came up as part of um, you know part of something that the OpenStack community was looking into. So we decided. Uh, to jump on the bandwagon, and um, it actually has provided a really clean, like, single place to put all your validation, um, a single place to look at your validation, and um, a it's it's removed com it's removed from the actual code that does the um, the the work, the business logic, so to speak. Um, so it's a little less uh, bothersome when people are doing um, businessy business logic -y kind of work. So notifications is another one. Um, at Rackspace, we had kind of done some external stuff to, uh, with notifications for our billing system. And so uh, we worked with the guys at HP to kind of uh, bridge that together into an internal notification system that could send, um, you know, send those messages on the message bus to whatever was interested to consuming them. Uh, um, and I, I, uh, from what I understand, the, the HP guys are using that as well. So. Um, in their deployed stack, um, modified users is another one. This is a uh, um, this is one of the good like forward facing features we got to got to work on, um, and that was effectively being able you to modify muted. a uh, user's password or the host that they um, can log in from in MySQL, uh, and uh, granting users access to databases, removing them from uh, sorry, revoking them from databases, listing their access and stuff like that. Um, we still don't have fine-grained user access, but um, given that it's an extension for MySQL, uh, it's not something that we necessarily um, are going to put on the top of our list um, right now in, term, in, in the community. I mean, if a company wants to come along and do it, then that's great. Um, and the last one that we really worked on, sorry if you guys can hear my dog. She just decided to get up because I'm talking now. Um, is volume extend. So um, our friends at United Stack helped us uh, 
get this working at Rackspace. We had uh, had built this in before Cinder had actually had the ability to uh, to do it. So when once Cinder had the ability to extend or grow volumes, um, we then built that into the API proper. Um, what uh, for a little bit of history, it was actually in the CLI, um, but it wasn't in the public code base itself because it didn't exist. So um, those are the big features we had for Havana. And this is interesting because it's supposed to, oh, uh, I don't think you're on presentation view because those are supposed to pop in one at a time. Oh, I'm sorry. When I was on presentation view, it actually just shows up as black. Oh, it's working now. Sorry. Yeah. Here we go. It's okay. Um, <laughs> it's a <bigger> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, a good amount of Havana was spent on integrating with OpenStack. Um, there's still a lot more to come um, in terms of integration, uh, and I'll discuss some of those things in IceHouse uh, features. But um, some of the other things we did in Havana that um, we're, we're plumbing related, we're, uh, we're uh, heat integration. Um, it's being built out better now and we're going to use heat integration as the default um, installation for clusters. So well, it's actually going to be the only implementation for clustering um, in an application. So, um, and, and integration with DevStack and all of those other um, things that, you know, end users don't care about, but develop, the developer community does care about. Um, so, uh, on to IceHouse. Uh, we've implemented some of these, um, and of course, we still have, like Sergey said, we're uh, just about to release I2, so then there's, after I2, you get the, the I3 uh, milestone, and then go into bug fix and release candidate mode to uh, hammer some, you know, hammer out the release. So, some of the features that we worked on, and, um, uh, you know, Marantis also helped with this one. They've been a really big help in the project, so um, that's, that's really awesome. So multi-data store, um, we now have the ability to uh, provision multiple data store types. Now this is something we've talked about for a while and we went back to the TC to amend um, our, um, uh, our, our mission statement, so to speak, uh, to, to include more data stores. Um, this is probably the biggest feature, I think, that is already implemented. Um, of course, clustering and replication is going to be a bigger feature I'd like to talk about. But multi-data store is the stepping stone for being able to, you know, spin up Mongo and spin up Cassandra and spin up, um, you know, some interesting clustering technology for MySQL. There's, there's a ton of them. Um, uh, it, gives, it gives us the ability to, as a uh, deployer, also say, hey, you can spin up a MySQL or a Redis instance or a Cassandra cluster um, all in one installation. And of course, on the back end, um, you can do some flavor tweaking and host aggregates to uh, to to d deploy the the um, instances in different you know uh, uh, availability zones or whatever you call them in your Nova installation. The, the good thing about um, Trove, just like uh, the other projects that build on top of Heat and Nova, is that you you can the user can know less about, the user can care less about where these things are and the operators can, you know, say, hey, all of my Redis, uh, you know, instances are gonna go on these servers. Um, so uh, this, is, this is really an interesting feature for us because it gives us the ability. And, it, and what, another thing that it did was it actually brought more people to Trove because it wasn't just MySQL as a service anymore. It was, um, you know, it was, it, data stores as a service. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of companies that are um, that have come to us and, and are interested in building out, um, you know, uh, a Rockstar Cassandra or Mongo or uh, Redis inst uh, installation. Um, so the next thing, next feature that I'm going to talk about is uh, Trove Conductor. This is another really fun one that we did. Um, so we, our guest sits on the instance that is running, say, MySQL. And that guest has a few functions. One's to, you know, make sure that the, the, the product that you're purchasing is online and happy. Um, and, and when it does that, it needs to write a status somewhere. So previously, we were writing status directly to the, um, as I like to call it, the infrastructure database, which is the, 
the the database that holds all of our information or the metadata database, but that's an overloaded term. The, the database that holds like all the instance ID information, not the customer's database. So it's writing to the um, infrastructure database to say, hey, my SQL instance is happy. Um, and then of course, it's also getting messages from the, uh, the, the system to say, hey, you know, maybe create a user, create a database. Um, but the main thing the conductor did was we noticed that there was a lot of chatter to the database from all of our instances and um, you know, there's security concerns there. Um, so we decided to move the communication over the message bus to a conductor very similar to the Nova conductor. So right now the conductor is small and it's in charge of um, you know, taking the information the guest gives it and distilling it to a data, uh, to the database, uh, to the infrastructure database. But, you know, the future of conductor could actually involve a different messaging uh, layer to, to not maybe use RabbitMQ, uh, to use a different, different communication layer for these, you know, tens upon thousands upon hundreds of thousands of guests um, to, you know, store a uh, in-memory version of the data so that it's a lot quicker to access uh, so that you don't actually have to go to the database every time. Um, so, so the conductor for us is a, the stepping stone for a much smarter, communication platform from the guest to the rest of the infrastructure. Um, and, and the, you know, that is already, um, it's, you know, it's in dev stack, it spins up and runs and the, and all of the, um, data store writing information is sent to the guest right now. So that's phase one. So there's a blueprint that, um, if anyone's interested in, I can, uh, link, um, later that, that talks about some of the other, thoughts we've had um, about where we can go with the conductor. None of that obviously is set in stone yet because there's no code for it other than what I, what I said that it concretely does today. Um, so moving on, this is a fun one. Um, this is the exact same thing that the Savannah guys are going through right now. Um, you know, we need to be able to spin up instances and clusters we need to be able to provide custom images built by uh, the Disk Image Builder, which is um, the, I don't know the name of the program, but Triple O had built the Disk Image Builder to uh, build images so that you can install them uh, onto your VMs. So it's a really easy command line uh, tool that gives you the ability to write some scripts and put them in a specific hierarchy and then give it to Disk Image Builder and it will then um, do those extra things on top of building like a base Ubuntu or base uh, Fedora. Um, VM. And so all of these things that go into the, the gating procedure in order to run the Tempest test, because you have to have a fully instrumented Trove environment to run a, an accurate, uh, you know, test scenario to actually spin up an instance and see what's going on. Um, so that is a piece of what we're working on, as well as the Tempest test themselves to actually spin up those instances. Um, and the uh, dev stack work in order to um, say, uh, you know, execute this image builder and um, cache those images uh, because they're, they don't change nearly as often as the Trove code base. Um, so that's kind of a big pipeline that we're working on right now um, in order to get testing working a little bit better, um, <clears throat> excuse me in uh, it, for, for all of the projects that need images and need Tempest tests. And the next thing, so heat integration. This is something that we already have, um, but we don't have a really amazing um, uh, implementation of. So we, um, we have a basic implementation, um, but it doesn't have a lot of the features, uh, or it didn't, um, in Havana have a lot of features like security groups, um, DNS, things like that. Um, so we've had a group of uh, individuals uh, comprised of Marantis and uh, HP um, and a little bit of Rackspace really focused on making heat the default implementation for spinning up instances and spinning up clusters. Um, I've already said that I don't want to see any uh, old school, I guess the original way we uh, install, um, old school installations of clusters. It doesn't make any sense because heat is a perfect example of uh, a resource to group, you know, as they put it, a stack 
or a uh, you know a grouping of resources that that um, are comprised of a logical unit like a cluster together. So they've already they they already do a lot of this work and they do all the installation too. So that's something that we're going to build upon uh, for clustering, um, and that's going to you know kind of fall into I believe it's the next one. Um, Oh, just kidding. Uh, I'll, I, I guess I saved the best to last. So configuration management, this is another, um, I don't know, this is a headache for customers, right? You want to be able to really tweak out your um, data store. Uh, and you don't want to, like for MySQL, you know, if it for some reason needs to be power cycled because the physical machine, um, you know, something happened to it, you, you lose anything you saved that was just, I mean, anything you, any commands that you did that were dynamic changes to uh, memory or to variables, uh, you lose. So uh, the ability for a customer to say, yes, you know, change some parameter to um, my particular data store and, and keep that saved. And every time I spin up uh, a new instance, you know, use, use a, uh, use a group of these that I have defined as, you know, this is what I want my WordPress blog to look like. So I'm spinning up my eighth WordPress blog, attach my WordPress template to it, um, to, and, uh, and, and edit those templates and be able to edit them across multiple instances um, and be able to delete things from uh, those templates, um, and, as well as to be able to see a list of the minimum and maximum values for those uh, and a way to remove uh, any values that operators would define as being um, uh, as, as something that could harm the user. For instance, um, if you're doing uh, point in time recovery and the user has the ability to say turn bin logs off for MySQL, you don't want to do that. Um, so we could, you know, as as the operator, you could remove specific things that you thought would cause harm. Um, so all of those things go into configuration management. It's under review right now. Um, the, it's, it's been worked on by a few people, and it's at a, it's at a really good state right now. Um, uh, our newest core member, Austin, um, has uh, spent the last few days tirelessly uh, pulling it down and testing it as much as he possibly could um, and giving Craig uh, some really good feedback there. So um, that feature is going to be really awesome and is going to be available in uh in ice house and so that brings us to the the last big feature clustering and replication so i'm really hopeful that this uh that something something good comes out of this in ice house um we're pretty far along and we've done a lot of talking about it and a lot of back and forth about clustering because we're trying to come up with a good api for clustering and replication um, for multiple data stores and you know that's that's not easy uh, and we don't want to rev the API four times <laughs> if we can, if we can, you know, um, not do that. So uh, we haven't really, you know, spent a lot of time on it. We've got some really dedicated guys uh, from Rackspace that are do, doing what they can. Um, and a awesome company uh, just just came up and is very interested in helping us with this. Uh, so their name is Paralastic, and they um, have really taken a lot of time to spin up on the project and. Um, understand what's going on, and they've been reading the blueprints and asking good questions. And they, as a group, um, I believe, want to uh, really tackle uh, how does clustering work for technologies uh, that that need it in Trove, and building out, building something, and then saying, yeah, this worked, this didn't work, um, and 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 maybe iterating on that a few times. So we may have something um, experimental in IceHouse for clustering and replication. I don't think we're going to have anything that's going to be a hard and fast API, though, um, just because I want to stress that it's something that we're going to have to iterate on a little bit uh, before we say this is the well-defined API. Everyone go deploy this um, and get customers running on it. So um, I do think there will just be a little bit of um, give and take with the API uh, for the first few revisions of it. So um, experimental. Um, that, I mean, the, the amount of support is to be determined with clustering and replication. I know that they're so awesome dudes, they're going to really knock, knock it out uh, as fast as they can. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It'll be really cool to have that in IceHouse as well. I mean, that's kind of, you know, if you think about it, that's kind of a jumping point onto really complex, um, you know, topologies with, uh, with Trove. You know, we can then start thinking about in-tiered slaves on MySQL uh, or, you know, 
uh, multi uh, availability zone um, uh, Cassandra deploys. You know some of the stuff that uh, Savannah's actually already tackled. So we're going to um, you know talk to them and use their subject matter experts as well in in the process of uh, actually building out the API. Um, and so I'll be trying to do as much of that kind of networking of groups of people, excuse me, as possible to to really make this an awesome an awesome product that we can then build, you know, really intelligent um, clusters from, and have people go install them in their data centers and have fun. So I think that's uh, the end. I think I, I think I have a cue, and I oh yeah, you're right. That did just totally turn uh, turn black there. Yeah, it worked out though. Well, I have a quick question for you. You are now I'm unmuted. Going back to chat to see if there's any other questions. Um, you mentioned a few times, I think, during the presentation, but as you guys are heading to be integrated with the Ice House release, could you talk a little bit about who is using Trove now? Um, obviously, your yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so Rackspace is uh, and has been running Trove in production for. Oh gosh, I don't even know. I would have to ask someone about that. Um, but let's just say it's a really needed. long time since it was Red Dwarf, since we were the only group really hacking on it. Um, HP has it deployed and are running uh, running it in their uh, you know environment. And I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's uh, for pay or for play uh, right now, as in beta or uh, full charge. yet. I I I can't speak to that. Um, but I know they have it running and they're running trunk. Um, and uh, the guys, uh, the guys over at eBay are running it as well, um, in in a form or fashion. Um, I'm not uh, too, you know, I don't know too much about it. But um, in terms of the, you know, fully deployed, pay for environment, uh, Rackspace and HP. And then I believe there's some people that are doing smaller deployments, um, internal deployments. But uh, but no one's really, you know, no one no one stood up to say. That they're doing it internally, um, like they're, they're running it internally. So we still it's don't have there. a lot. Of, I mean, in the last, <laughs> well, yeah, it is in the wild, and it's been, you know, the last six nine months. Is, there's been a lot. It went from no one asking how to install it to a decent number of people asking questions about installation and us uh, making the documentation better over the course of the last few months. So even though it's you you know, now not fully deployed and pay for uh, in a lot of places, I do think that it's gaining traction. And I, I mean, I've definitely seen that. And I'm sure that the Savannah guys would say the exact same thing. I mean, it's a, uh, you, it goes from no one talks about your project ever, except you know you may hear it mentioned twice at, a, uh, at an OpenStack summit by a random person to you, know, you have completely random people mentioning it at OpenStack meetups uh, that you're just sitting in, uh, you know, on a given day. So, and then lots of people coming in and asking questions. So it's really, awesome. it's it's a really awesome process, and uh, it it helped a lot for us for traction. Well, you guys must have been extremely thorough because we do not have any questions in the chat for you right now. But um, I wanted to say thank you to both Sergey and Michael for taking the time to put together these materials and coming to speak today. Uh, it's really valuable content for us to have and um, we'll make this recording available and their slides available after the fact as well. So, um, so thank you both very much and thanks everyone for attending and we'll keep doing more of these. Thank you. It's, it was really fun to do. Great. Thanks, Sergey. Thank you.